in this lesson, we're going to be talking about dilations. The success criteria is I can identify a dilation, I can find the coordinates of a figure dilated with respect to the origin, and I can use coordinates to dilate a figure with respect to the origin. A dilation is a transformation in which a figure is made larger or smaller with respect to a point called the center of dilation. In a dilation, the angles of the image and the original figure are congruent. Remember, congruent means the same. Okay, so here in this little image, this is the center of dilation, and here is the figure, and then here is another figure that's the same shape but just a different size. Okay, and a scale drawing is an example of a dilation. So I'm on desmos.com right now, and I'm going to show you guys a little example of a dilation where the center of dilation is the origin. So here's the origin, okay? And when I move the slider, you can see that the red shape is getting larger, but all the angles are the same. So the actual shape of this is the same. The size is just different. I'm going to put this back to four. So notice that from the origin, this vertex right here is one unit away, and then this vertex right here is one, two, three, four units away. Now, over here, this vertex is one down and one right from the origin, and then this one right here is going to be four down and four right. And then last, over here, this one is one down and two left. This one's going to be four down and eight left. So this is an example of an enlargement, which we'll talk about, and then a reduction is if I make this smaller. So if I make this 0 0.5, I'll zoom in, okay? So here's our original shape, okay? And then this is another dilation, but I made this smaller, and this is called a reduction. We'll talk about that later, too. For example one, tell whether the blue figure is a dilation of the red figure. Well, for part A, I can see that this is the same shape. It looks like the same shape anyway. And if I kind of drew a little line right here, It looks like this could be a possible center of dilation. So I'm going to say that, yes, this is a dilation. Okay. Now, over here, these two figures look like the same shape. Okay. So they are the, they're not a different size. This looks more like a translation because I'm just sliding this thing. I'm not changing the size of this. So this is not a dilation. So now we're done with this one. In a dilation, the value of the ratio of the side lengths of the image to the corresponding side lengths of the original figure is the scale factor of the dilation. Okay, now that sounds like a bunch of complicated math words, but the scale factor, all it is, is when you divide one of your side lengths of the image by the corresponding side length of the original figure. So, in this case, I see that this is six units long, okay, so this line segment is six units long. And then if I divide that by the original corresponding, so A to B instead of A prime to B prime, so the line segment AB is only two units. So this scale factor would be a scale factor of three. Dilations in the coordinate plane. To dilate a figure with respect to the origin, multiply the coordinates of each vertex by the scale factor K. In algebra, that just means take your original point X comma Y and turn that into K times X comma K times Y. When k is greater than 1, the dilation is an enlargement. When k is greater than 0 and less than 1, the dilation is a reduction. In this course, when the center of dilation is not specified, it is always the origin. Okay? So if we look here, all I did to get from all my coordinates was I just multiplied the ordered pairs by my scale factor, which we figured out was 3. So this is 0, 2. If I multiply both of those by 3, I get 0, 6. And then b is 2, 2. I multiply those both by 3, I get 6, 6. And then over here, this is 2, 0. So if I multiply that by 3, I get 6, 0. In example 2, the vertices of a triangle are a, 1, 3, b, 2, 3, and c, 2, 1. Draw the image after a dilation with a scale factor of 3. Identify the type of dilation. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is plot my original triangle. So I'll do that in red. So a is 1, 3, b is 2, 3, and c is 2, 1. All right, so I'm going to draw that, and then I'll label it. All right, so here's A, B, 
E, and C. All right, so now I need to dilate this with a scale factor of three. And remember, our center of dilation is always assumed to be the origin unless we're told otherwise. So all I need to do is just multiply these ordered pairs by three, each component in the ordered pair by three, and then I'll get my dilated figure, okay? So instead of going one comma three, I'm gonna go three comma nine, because if I multiply one by three, I get three, and then three times three is nine. So three comma nine, I'll do that in blue. Then for point B, I have two comma three. Well, two times three is six, and then three times three once again is nine. So that's gonna be right here. And I'll label these, so this is A prime, B prime. And then C is two comma one. Well, two times three is six, and then one times three is three. So it's gonna be right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw a dotted line for my image. Label this C prime. Okay, so I'm gonna write the coordinates down. So A prime is three comma nine, B prime is six comma nine, and C prime is six comma three. Okay, now I need to identify the type of dilation. Since my image is getting larger than my original figure, this is an enlargement. If my image was getting smaller than my original figure, it would be a reduction. But in this case, it is an enlargement. And notice, all I had to do to find these ordered pairs were just multiply these ordered pairs, each component, by our scale factor, which was three. And now we're done. For example three, the vertices of a rectangle are w, negative four, negative six, x, negative four, comma, eight, y, four, comma, eight, and z, four, comma, negative six. Draw the image after a dilation with a scale factor of 0 0.5, or one half identify the type of dilation. So first I'm gonna plot my original figure. I'll do that one in blue. So I have negative four and then negative six. This is W. Negative four and then positive eight. This is X. And then I have four comma eight. This is Y. And then I have four comma negative six, which is Z. I'm gonna draw my rectangle now. All right, so now that I've got my rectangle drawn, I'm going to dilate this with a scale factor of 0 0.5. So that means I'm just gonna multiply each of these components of my ordered pairs by 0 0.5, all right? So now what I'm gonna do, instead of W being negative four comma negative six, I'm just gonna take half of that because multiplying by 0 0.5 is the same thing as multiplying by one half, which is the same thing as dividing by two. So I'm just gonna take half of all of these. So instead of negative four, negative six, I'm gonna go to negative two, and then negative three, which will be right there. I'll do this in purple. This is a W prime. And then for X, I have negative four comma eight. So if I cut that in half, it's negative two comma four, which is right here, X prime. And then for Y, it's four comma eight. So I divide that by two, I get two comma four. Y prime. And then for Z, I have four comma six. So divide that by two, I get two comma negative three and that is Z prime. Okay, and notice, I don't have grid marks for the odd numbers here, so I just put it right in the middle. All right, now I'm gonna draw my rectangle. I'll use my rectangle tool, but you guys can just draw it the regular way. All right, so now I'm gonna label my points of the image. So W prime is negative two, negative three. X prime is negative two, four. Y prime is two comma four, and Z prime is two comma negative three. And like I mentioned in the last example, since my image is getting smaller than my original figure, this is a reduction. And now we're done with this one. For example four, the vertices of a trapezoid are A, negative two comma negative one, B, negative one comma one, C, zero one, and D, zero comma negative one. Dilate the trapezoid using a scale factor of two. Then translate it six units right and two units up. What are the coordinates of the image? Well, first thing I'm gonna do is plot my original figure. So I'll do that in blue. So I have negative two, negative one. That's A. And then negative one, one. That's B. And then zero, one. That's C. 
and then zero, negative one. This is D. So I'll draw this. All right, now I'm going to dilate this trapezoid with a scale factor of two. So once again, that just means I multiply each component of my coordinate by two. So A, instead of negative two comma negative one, it's gonna be negative four comma negative two. So that will be right here. Do this in purple. A prime. B will be, instead of negative one, one, it'll be negative two comma two. So that's B prime. C, instead of zero comma one, it's gonna be zero comma two. C prime. And then for D, instead of zero comma negative one, it's gonna be zero comma negative two. Okay, once again, all I did is multiplied all of these components by two. Now I'm gonna draw my dotted line. All right, but we're not done. The next thing I need to do is translate this six units right and two units up. Remember, a translation is a slide, so I'm just gonna slide this image six units right and two units up. So I'm gonna do that with each vertex. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two. So here is going to be C double prime at six comma four. Okay, now I can do the same thing with each one, count six right and then two up, or what I can do is just redraw this exact image um, starting over here. Okay, both will work. What I recommend doing is do it one way and then check it by doing the other way. So I'm gonna draw this figure just based on the dimensions here. So B prime is two units away from C prime, so I'm gonna go right here for B double prime. And then from B prime to A prime, I go down four, left two, so I'm gonna do the same thing here, down four, left two, that's A prime. And then to get from A prime to D prime, I just move four units to the right. So I'm gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, four. This is D double prime. Now I'm just gonna draw my figure. All right, so now I've successfully finished drawing my image, but now I need to write down the coordinates. So A double prime is two comma zero. B double prime is four comma four. C double prime is six comma four. And D double prime is six comma zero. So I have successfully dilated this and then translated this figure, and now we're done. For example five, a wildlife refuge is mapped on a coordinate plane where each grid line represents one mile. The refuge has vertices J, zero comma zero, K, one comma three, and L, four comma zero. An expansion of a refuge can be represented by a dilation with a scale factor of 1.5. How much does the area of the wildlife refuge increase? Okay, so let's plot our original wildlife refuge. So J is zero, zero. And then K is one comma three. And then L is four comma zero. So now I'm going to draw my line segments. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to dilate this with a scale factor of 1.5. So remember, with my center dilation being the origin, that's the assumption, unless I tell you otherwise, um, all I have to do is multiply the components of each of my coordinates, okay, so the x value and the y value, by my scale factor, 1.5. Well, for j, this is the origin, 0, 0. 0 times anything is 0, so j prime is just going to be in the same spot. I'm going to write that down. j prime is just still going to be 0, 0. Plot that and label it. Now, for k prime... I'm gonna do a little scratch math here, but my x component of k is one, so one times my scale factor 1.5 is just 1.5, and then three is my y component of k, so three times 1.5, I get 15, 
and then I get three times one is three, plus one is four, move the decimal once. So I get 4.5 for k prime. So I'm gonna plot that right now. And notice I don't have a grid line here, but I'm just using my best estimate to figure out that this is 1.5, which is in between one and two, and then 4.5 for my y value, which is in between four and five. Okay, and then for L, which is four comma zero, well, if I do four times 1.5, do that over here, 1.5 times four, I get 20, and then four times one is four, plus two is six, move the decimal, so that's just gonna be six. So L, I'm gonna get six, and then anything times zero is zero. So I'll plot that over here. Now I'm gonna draw my image. All right, and I forgot to label these, so I will label this. This is K prime and L prime, okay? So I've successfully drawn the addition to the refuge, but now I need to figure out how much did the area increase by? Well, I have two triangles right here. Remember, to find the area of a triangle, all I need to do is area equals one half the base times the height, okay? Well, I will do the original triangle in red, so the area of the original triangle is one half. The base, if you look, if I treat this as my base, that's just four units, in this case, four miles. And the height is three, three miles, okay? Okay, well, I know that half of four is two, two times three is six. So the area here is equal to six miles squared, or six square miles, okay? Now I'll do the blue, the expansion, so that is going to give me a base, one half times the base, which is six in this case. And then the height is 4.5. Okay, well, half of six is three. And then if I do three times 4.5, I'll do that out. I get 15. Then I get 12 plus one is 13, move the decimal. So my area is equal to 13.5 miles squared. So I've increased my area of the refuge by 13.5 minus six, which is gonna be 7.5. Miles squared, whoops. And if you wanna figure out what number I multiplied six by to get to 13.5. Um, I can just divide 13.5 by six and simplify this fraction, okay? Well, if I multiply this by two, I get 27 over 12, and I can divide a three out of the top and bottom, and I get nine over four, which is the same thing as two and one fourth, okay? Two and one fourth is the same thing as a 125% increase in area, okay? So we increase the area by 7.5 square miles, which in this case is a 125% increase in area. Anyway, now we're done.